Hello, I'm Bert Bronius, and this presentation is on the Seven Laws of Teaching. So how would you begin your book about teaching if you were one of the most famous educators of your time? Let's say, let's say you were president of a couple of major universities and also state superintendent of education. You were founder of a major educational journey. Well, here's how you would do it if you were Dr. John Milton Gregory. You'd start on the very first page. You'd start with a quote from Proverbs 22, 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. That's how this educational classic begins. It's the seven laws of teaching, and that quote is the very first thing you see when you open the cover. Gregory was the founder of Michigan Journal of Education, superintendent of public instruction for the state of Michigan, and president of Kalamazoo College, as well as president of the University of Illinois. What follows is a small book that he's written. It's Gregory's Seven Laws. You could think of them as rules or as principles for teaching. I'll list each one and give a brief explanation. They are the law of the teacher, the law of the learner, the law of the language, the law of the lesson, the law of the teaching process, the law of the learning process, and the law of application and review. So first, the law of the teacher. A teacher must be one who knows the lesson or truth to be taught. Teachers are to have a firm and thorough grasp of the material that they plan to teach. Number two, the law of the learner. A learner is one who attends with interest to the lesson given. There is no learning without attentiveness and interest. The law of the language. The language is a medium or channel between the teacher and the learner, and it's got to be common to both. The words used by teachers are to be understood by both teacher and learner in the same sense. The language must be clear and vivid to both alike. The law of the lesson. The lesson to be learned must be explained in the terms of what is already known by the learner. The unknown is to be explained by the known. Begin with what is already well known or mastered about a topic, subject, concept, or skill. Then proceed to the unknown by single, easy, and natural steps, letting the known explain the unknown. The law of the teaching process. Teaching is arousing and using the learner's mind to form in it a desired thought, attitude, or skill. Use the learner's own mind, exciting their self-activities. Keep their thoughts, as much as is possible, ahead of your own direct input, helping them to discover that which is to be learned. Sometimes this is referred to as teaching through indirection. The law of the learning process. Learning is thinking and behaving into one's own understanding and abilities, a new idea or skill. This requires learners to reproduce in thought or action the lesson to be learned. Thinking it out in its parts, its proofs, connections, and applications until they can express it in their own language or behaviors. And finally, the last, the law of application and review. The test and proof of teaching done is a finishing and fastening process that requires reviewing, rethinking, re-knowing, and reproducing of the material taught. 
review in order to reproduce correctly the old, deepening its impression with new thoughts, correcting false views or behaviors, and completing correctly what was taught and learned. So in summary, you've been briefly introduced to the seven laws. The laws give us a way of thinking about education. They help us look at teaching and learning from seven different but interrelated perspectives or points of view, that of the teacher, the learner, the language, the lesson, teaching process, learning process, and review and application. Each of these laws is developed in detail in Gregory's book, you can find a downloadable copy by going to my blog, bloggerbert.blogspot.com, and clicking on free books. And you can also purchase a print copy if you would want by going in that same section to recommended books to purchase. Thank you for attending to this brief overview of the laws of teaching. May God Bless you in your teaching ministry.